What's up YouTube, I'm Mike and today I'm back with another video uh, talking about the forklift industry. I made a video yesterday titled What It's Like in Sales at Sunbelt Material Handling which is a forklift company in the DFW uh, area that I worked for for 20 years. I am currently not working in the forklift industry and after re releasing that video I realized that actually puts me in a really unique situation because I have two decades of experience in an industry and I am currently not beholden to any particular brand or company. So that makes me really, really very good at being an unbiased source of information for the consumer who might be looking to make their first or or maybe 300th forklift purchase. So what we're going to be talking about today are some things that if you happen to be in the market for a new forklift you should consider. Uh, first and foremost, the forklift industry is a very, very competitive industry. It is, it is very, very akin to the uh, passenger car industry. So when you go looking for what is typically the most standard forklift, you're usually in the market for a 5,000 pound cushion tire, either LP or electric forklift. This is sort of the, you know, the, 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 the number one lift that, that is probably sold um, in anywhere in America. That, that, that's going to vary depending on your application, but that's sort of the, the ground floor for, for most people. Some people might be into a slightly narrower aisle situation where they're running a 3,500 pound forklift, but um, all of these, everything that I'm going to be saying in this video is basically going to apply regardless of the weight capacity of the forklift that you're looking at. Because what you're probably going to be d making a decision on is what brand of forklift do you want to buy. You know, if you're in the electric market, then that's going to limit you to products like uh, Raymond, uh, Clark, um, Jan Heinrich makes an electric product, Lindy makes an electric product. Um, there are a number, I'm not going to name every single brand because it's not really relevant and you'll see why in a minute. If you are on the IC side of things, if you're on the industrial, uh, excuse me, the internal combustion engine side of things, then you're looking at one of the, the major IC manufacturers. So you're probably looking at a Unicarrier's truck or a Mitsubishi truck or a Toyota truck or a Heister or a Yale truck, for example. One of the things that you need to understand, especially in the IC market, is that again, it's very much like the car market. You're not so much buying a forklift as you are buying the company that's selling the forklift. You can buy a Honda Accord, you can buy a Toyota Camry, you can buy a Nissan Altima, you can buy a Hyundai Sonata. All of these cars are gonna be relatively comparable in what they do, in their reliability, in the, f the features and functions, they're, they're all going to, to pretty much fill the same, you know, fit the same niche. And, and that's, that's done for a reason. And typically speaking, um, they're all going to be relatively comparably priced. Everybody, you know, who makes a car in a certain segment is competing against other people in a similar segment. So your Toyota, so in the forklift industry, you're looking at Yale, Toyota, Mitsubishi, um, Unicarriers, Clark, um, uh, what's the, the, uh, the yellow and black one I can't think of right now, I should be able to think of, um, damn, um, it'll come to me. It doesn't matter. It, 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 at that stage of the game, every one of these trucks is either very comparable or basically identical. So for example, Unicarriers forklifts are really just Mitsubishis. So um, Unicarriers is owned by a company called, or used to be at least it used to be called Mitsubishi Logis Next. Uh, when I was working there, I think that's still the name of the the conglomerate. And I believe they also make. Um, uh, the, I, I think they have the same engine in a, in a in a Mitsubishi, in a Unicarriers, in a uh, Dar. What is Dar sell? Uh, uh, Caterpillar. I believe the MCFA or Mitsubishi Logis Next trucks, a lot of them run the same engines, same transmissions, 
um, as their the other counterparts because sometimes they're owned by the same company. Toyota being the major outlier, Toyota is typically considered number one in the industry and they are just now getting back into the industry in 2004 due to a hiccup that lasted a, a year or two where their engine did not meet uh, EPA regulations and so Toyota was out of the game for some period of time uh, developing a new engine. From what I hear from my sources in the industry is that they are back in the game and they have an engine that is now uh, up to spec with everyone else. So in the DFW market, Toyota tends to be the number one big dog. They are the major player in the, in the industry in that area. <clears throat> Excuse me. So like I was saying, when you're buying a forklift, kind of like when you're buying a car, you're really, you really can't go wrong with any of these brands. Uh, Toyota might cost you a little bit more because again, they are kind of considered to be the top dog in the industry. But as I explained in my video titled, What It's Like uh, Working for Sunbelt Material Handling, when it really comes down to it, everything is designed to be relatively equal because uh, first you have the price of the forklift, which is going to be comparable across all of these brands that I've talked about. And then you're going to have the price of repairs, which again is going to be comparable across all of the brands that I talked about because they all constantly chase each other in the market. So as I mentioned in a previous video, when Shoppers raises their service rate, for whatever reason they choose to do so, Sunbelt Material Handling raises their service rate, and Equipment Depot raises their service rate, and Lone Star, and Briggs, and everybody else. So when you go to look for a forklift, what you're going to find out is that really you're buying the company who sells the forklift, and you're buying the guy who sold it to you. So one of the reasons that I'm not currently employed is because I uh, took exception with some of the things that were being done at the company that I was working for, Sunbelt Material Handling, and um, and uh, uh, so I, I, I tended to be the kind of guy who really rocked the boat at my company because I was all about taking care of my customer first, and so when I saw things that may or may not be industry standard practices taking place with one of my customers, I was very vocal in trying to be the best salesperson that I could be, the best customer service rep that I could be. I was always going to bat for my customers and I was not really a team player for the company that employed me because I, at the end of the day, am a consumer. And so, while there are a lot of things that are true, no matter what brand you buy a forklift, for example, when you get service repair done on your forklift, which we'll talk about in, in detail in, in another video, you're gonna see across the industry that you're gonna be charged for various line items like shop supplies and miscellaneous. These are unfortunately bullshit charges that are just added to a bill to drum up the cost of repairs. And what happens is really a disservice to the American consumer because these, the, these fluff charges increase the cost of doing business for companies like Coca-Cola, LG, Best Made Pickles, FedEx. These are some of the companies that I dealt with during my career. And so when they have to pay higher than necessary repair costs on their forklift equipment, that cost ultimately gets paid, gets passed on to the consumer. So my wife was telling me the other day that a case of Dr. Pepper's costs like $12 now. It's gotten completely insane. Runaway inflation is killing the American consumer and one of the major driving factors in the runaway, runaway inflation that we are seeing is coming at the corporate level where everybody just continues to try to put their hand in the cookie jar and companies are constantly billing other companies bullshit charges that really don't need to be there and unfortunately that just inflates the cost of goods for everyone involved so at the end of the day if you're buying an ic truck as far as quality goes of the of the piece of equipment you really can't go wrong no matter who you purchase from whether it's like i said caterpillar mitsubishi um unicarriers um all of the name Toyota, all the names that I've already mentioned, um, they're all going to be relatively comparable. What you are actually buying is do you trust 
the sales guy who's who's selling you the truck and do you trust the company that you're buying it from because no matter what truck you buy at some point in time you're going to have to have service done on this truck and that's when the rubber really meets the fucking road is is your the guy who sold you that truck is he going to be there in two or three years when it's time for service? Like, for example, I worked for Sunbelt Material Handling for 20 years. My grandfather was in this business before me. My father was in this business before me. I'm actually a third generation forklift guy. So when I made a commitment to one of my customers, they could take that commitment to the bank because I intended to retire uh, at this company. I, I intended to work, to work for Sunbelt Material Handling until the day that I died. It ended up not working that way, but if you look around the industry, you will find there is a lot of turnover amongst salespeople of various different companies, and I think that's a decidedly bad look. When you've got a guy who's willing to be loyal to your company, it goes a long way to building to building a relationship with 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 your with your customers. When every time they come back for another truck, they get to deal with the same guy that they've already developed a trusting relationship with. And so, secondly. Second to, do you trust your sales guy? Do you trust the company that is representing the product? Because like at the end of the day, for example, Sunbelt Material Handling, they just happen to be a dealer. They sell Clark and Unicarrier's trucks and, and maybe more brands now since I've been gone, but there are other places that you can buy a Unicarrier's forklift from. You don't have to buy a Unicarrier's forklift from, from Sunbelt Material Handling. You could choose, for example, to buy a Unicarrier's truck from Dadelift in Miami and have it shipped to you in the DFW area. There's a law, you, you're not tied to any one particular business. And so if you don't trust the people that are selling you that truck to stand by their product and to operate in a manner that is consistent with you know, the, 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 the integrity that you would come to expect from one of your service providers, then that should be ultimately the number one thing that you are trying to decide. When, you're, when you sit down to put pen on paper and you decide to buy one or two or 10 or 300 forklifts, ultimately what you are really looking at is what company do I trust to take care of my business? Because at the end of the day, I don't have to tell you, forklifts don't make you money. They cost you money. Every time your forklift is down, is not operational, is not moving your product on and off of a rack or in or out of the back of a, of a truck or a flatbed, you are not being able to do the business that you set out to do. And that was one of the things that we used to say at Sunbelt Material Handling was that our job was to take you out of the forklift industry, to take you out of the forklift business. My job as a customer service rep was to make sure that your forklifts were always up and running so that you didn't have to worry about them. And so when you're trying to decide what company do you want to buy a forklift from, the most important thing for you to decide is what company do I think is going to offer me the maximum amount of uptime? Who is going to keep my forklift in service the most? And when something goes wrong, who can I trust to affect the, 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 the repairs uh, quickly, fairly, efficiently? Who can I trust to give me a loaner truck when I need it? Who can I trust if I need to get a rental, if I need to get deliveries, what is my CSS rep going to stay in contact with me and let me know at what you know where my truck is in the shop? Is he going to communicate how long it's going to take for parts to come in? Is he going to communicate when the parts arrive? Is he going to make sure they get delivered to me in a timely fashion? These are all of the things that actually matter in the forklift industry. It's not the color of the paint on your truck. Because at the end of the day, that's all it is. It's just a bunch of steel and lead and iron and they get painted different colors and they get put, they get called different things and they get represented by different companies. But at the end of the day, a forklift is nothing more than a tool to help you do your job. And so don't get caught up on which brand of forklift you buy. The thing that is most important is what company, what forklift company are you willing to invest in? What forklift company are you willing to depend on 
to keep you doing what you do, to keep you in your business. Because at the end of the day, chances are your business is not forklifts. You know, you're, you're moving lumber or you're, move, you're moving light fixtures or you're moving whatever it is that you do in your business. Your, the objective that you have is to stay operating your business. And so if you go out into the, into the, into the business world and you start looking at various different forklift brands, that is the question that you need to be asking yourself most. Who can I depend on? One of the things that you should definitely do when you're shopping different forklift companies, because again, you, you, what you are ultimately doing is shopping forklift companies, not forklift brands, is that you should be asking for references. Who is your neighbor using? Who is the guy down the street using? Who, who is your sister company in another state using? That will help you to get a good idea of not only the quality of the fucking, uh, of the, the truck itself, but of the brand itself. If, if you've got Toyota trucks all over the country and you're having a good experience with Toyota all over the country, then chances are Toyota might just be the brand for you because Toyota is choosing dealers that are reputable and that take care of their customers. If you find out, for example, that Joe Blow down the street has a really good relationship with Unicarriers, but your sister companies in other states are not having such a good time, then maybe that's indicative that the uh, Mitsubishi Logist Next is not doing a good job of selecting their dealers. So these are the questions that you should be asking. Find out who is happy with their forklift provider, who is happy with their sales guy, who is happy with their, their CSS guy. What are your downtimes? How long does it take to get parts? Do you offer free loaners? Um, what does your full maintenance program look like? What exactly is covered? How much am I getting billed travel time both ways? Am I paying for somebody else's travel time? Will you allow me to see, will, will you meet with me and audit my invoices? What if I have a question about a charge? What is the process for getting this handled? And that can vary greatly depending upon the size of the company. One of the things that I always used to sell because uh, Sunbelt Material Handling was a smaller company compare, compared to like a Shoppa's is that I would tell people, look, you know, to Shoppa's, you're just a number. At Sunbelt Material Handling, you're everything to me. And so your needs are much more important to me than, than just being a drop in the bucket to, some, to one of these bigger companies. Maybe there's truth to that, maybe there's not. I've never worked for a bigger company to know how they handle their business. But at the end of the day, these are the questions you should be asking. It's really not about what is the best forklift, what is the most reliable forklift. They're all very, very comparable. You are buying the business and the people who work for the business that are selling you that truck. And that is, at the end of the day, like I said, uh, what you're making your decision on. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions about various different makes, models, brands, if you're curious about whether you should go electric or IC, if you want to pick my brain about the things that I've seen in the last 20 years in the forklift industry, if you think maybe you have been the victim uh, of a company that took advantage of you, uh, you, want to, you want somebody to go over your invoices with you or sit down and talk to you about why a certain charge is there, you know, should it be there, is this typical practices, then feel free to reach out, me, uh, reach out to me in the comments and I would be happy to work through all of these things with you because again, it's, it's what I spent 20 years of my life doing. I've worked in the parts department, the service department, I've dealt with rentals, and I've sold new and used equipment. So I have really experienced completely across the gamut of the entire forklift industry. And if you are a consumer who's very make, who's getting ready to make the very nerve wracking purchase of investing in a brand and a company to take care of your business and you have questions that you wanna answer before you make that decision, feel free to reach out to me in the comments section below and I'll be happy to go over those with you. Uh, thank you for watching this video and as always, uh, we'll see you on the next one.